It doesn't matter where you are across the country, city, suburbs, urban, rural. Every neighborhood shares a common problem, sex trafficking. Young girls and boys are being sold for sex, and it's happening in our own backyards. Rachel Ostergaard is the director of the Salvation Army's Stop It program, and she's here to tell us what to look for and what we can do about human trafficking. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. being here. I think a lot of times when we talk about this, people say, not happening in my neighborhood, but you know firsthand it is happening everywhere. Yeah, I mean, we hear a lot, or people assume that our programs and our services are really just in the city of Chicago, but we serve not just Chicago, but the entire suburban area, the collar counties, and we've had clients in all of the, all of the counties. So we've had folks not just in the super urban places, but also in the more rural and the suburb, suburban areas as well. I think people often don't understand how this happens, and in so many cases, these are kids who have been abused at home and are escaping, thinking they're going to be able to find a better life, only to be taken advantage of again. Yeah, and what we see a lot is that there's this often a sort of grooming or a relationship building process that happens between a survivor of trafficking and the trafficker. And it's not just sex trafficking, but labor trafficking as well. We see some of those similar dynamics as well when it comes to labor trafficking. So a trafficker will take advantage of a vulnerability or something that they see within a person that could be that they ran away from home and that the bad home life or economic vulnerability or other things that are happening in their lives. And then the trafficker will take advantage of that and prey on that vulnerability and create a situation that seems like it could be better than what their life is. So how can you help? If there's someone who is watching right now saying, I need to get out of this situation, if there's someone who has a friend or a family member, how can they get help? Well, you can get, we have a, there are a number of services here in the Chicagoland area and we have a hotline that you can call to start getting connected to resources and services. Um, and so I think that's a very a good first stop. There's also a national human trafficking hotline that folks can call and access resources. We can get you connected to um, benefits, getting you connected to education, get you connected to a number of all of the things. People, the survivors of trafficking need access to all of the resources and we can help kind of be a conduit for that to help get people connected to those things. So how do you get on that bridge from the moment you make that phone call to extricating yourself from someone who is very good at manipulating you and in many cases maybe drug you are, or locking you in a home. I mean, I think it's getting out of a trafficking situation is can be a very complicated thing to try and do. And so I think you know, making that first phone call or trying to get access to those resources and the help is a good first place to start. But we also know that getting out of that situation is a process and that we as service providers know that we need to like hear the people that we're working with and trust that they also know are the authorities and the experts in their lives and we want to work with them to help take those first steps um, and we know it's not as easy to like oh gosh this is a hard situation I need to get out let me get out like there's a lot of like groundwork that can need to happen and it's such a big effort I mean not only do they need to get out they need education they need money they need a place to live they in many cases need counseling so how do we help <laughs> yeah I mean I think we can act, get, get, the, get, the, get them connected to all sorts of reasons including mental health and, and mental health counseling and all kinds of things I also think it's important to point out because of the way trafficking often often happens that people might have like physical freedom of movement but it's much more complicated so you know I feel like sometimes when people talk, talk about trafficking they think that people are going to be locked in rooms and chained to beds and they have this imagery that comes to mind but the reality is it's a lot more complicated than that and the reality is that the, the survivors that we work with both sex and labor trafficking um, look like all of us and they you are they're in our restaurants they're in our schools yeah. they're like you know, working at the factories and there's not one sort of thing that they look like or one sort of like, and therefore there's also not one clear path out, you know. Yeah, but they're all in pain. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for raising awareness. It is so important. The Salvation Army's Stop It Hotline is 877-606-3158. You can call for help and it will be confidential.